and welcome back to Review Nights. Today we take a rare look at a figure from McFarlane's DC Multiverse line. It's General Zod. The General comes in a pretty basic window box, through which we can see the figure along with his accessories, two extra pairs of hands, a collectible playing card, and a display stand. He's got his name on the front, on the side, and a nice picture of him on the back. Below that picture are some pictures of other characters' cards in the line. On the other side, we have the character's name in extra-large font, along with a nod to the 2016 DC Rebirth, in which DC Comics performed a line-wide relaunch of all of their titles and characters, including Superman's Kryptonian nemesis. Oh, Christ. Another Superman. What's wrong with Superman? They're so boring. Oh look, I've got every superpower all at once. Well, isn't that nice? Kinda takes all the fun out of it, don't you think? I don't think I see that in this character. Oh, come along. Are you the Flash now, eh? Outside of the box, and the general stands about 7 inches, and it has a nicely detailed sculpt for a mass retail line. He's got articulation in his ankles, his shins, knees, waist, elbows, forearms, wrists, shoulders, and neck. One thing I did notice is the not-too-crisp paint apps on his face. As you can see, with the beard and the skin tones intermingling, and some more coloring outside of the lines on his shoulder insignia as well. His cape is plastic, but it's pliable. His joints are all firm, but not too tight. Though, be careful with his hands. They are made to come off, and they do so with ease. Oh, really? I'm surprised he doesn't have a superpower to fix his all that. The character of General Zod first appeared in 1961 as a bald and clean-shaven villain, but ever since Terrence Stamp's portrayal in the 1978 film Superman, he has always been depicted with the black hair and goatee slash beard. Overall, he's a decent action figure, but for me, General Zod is a very important character and a very important villain for Superman. After Terrence Stamp's iconic portrayal, really the very first supervillain in movie history, no toy has ever done him justice. Almost every one of the toys has been a very lazy effort by whichever company that comes off more like a generic figure in a black beard, nothing more. No personality to the figure, especially in the face sculpt, and he deserves so much more. The final verdict, two stars. <laughs> 